You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you are notified for when my next podcast goes live. And boom, we're on. And today's guest, we've got Ronnie Field. Ronnie, how are we? Very well, thank you. Good to have you on. You're the old school, probably one of the last from that generation. Yes, I suppose I am. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having us on. Yeah, thanks for coming on. You've lived the life. You've just released a new book, which we'll plug straight away. What's your book called, Ron? Nefarious. Where can people buy your book? Amazon, airports, supermarkets. It's everywhere now. Even Tesco's in Sutton. Good. <laughs> Do you ever think you would write a book? No. No, I didn't want to. Why? I just didn't think anyone would be interested in it. Just goes to show, though, we're sitting at number one, no? Yeah. It's, in it's, the charts, it's, it's crime been, charts. It's been number one, and then it's gone to number four and back to number one, so it's doing well. Good. But before we get into everything, though, I always like to go back to the start with my guests, get more, more of a bit of understanding about you, Ron, where you grew up and how it all began. Yeah, I was um, born in the workhouse in Epsom. The last workhouse, well, one of the last workhouses to uh, close. Uh, but all my brothers and sisters were born in there as well. There was 13 of us at one time. A lot of them, were most, most of them were dead. There's only me and my sister left. And uh, we moved, moved out from there to Cheam. I moved in with my gran, who was more like Baudacere than her gran. She was evil. She was a nasty woman. She took great delight in hurting people. She really, you know, I, I didn't get it so bad, but my, my brothers got it worse than me. Because uh, I, cause I was supposed got worn out by the time I was born, <laughs> being the youngest. And um, but, yeah, she wasn't a very nice person. And my uncle Fred, he was a coal man. He was about six foot two, six foot one. And uh, he used to like eating us a lot as well. And... Uh, <clears throat> One day, uh, he interfered with my sister. So, um, a couple of years later, when I was a little bit bigger, I waited in the bathroom, which used to be over the top of the back door with an house brick. And when he came in, I threw it down and put him down on the floor. He weren't quite out, but it was when I left him. I gave him a right good kicking and a stamping and everything I could think of. And he moved out that evening, but when he came out of the hospital, he went up to A and E. When he came out of there, he never come back again. So uh, we got rid of him. Did you go to school, Ron? Yeah, I went to school. Yeah, I went. To, um, my last school was Chatsworth, Chatsworth Road. What were you like there? Uh, bit of a pest, I suppose. <laughs> Ain't nothing changed, Ronnie. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not very well educated. Uh, more streetwise than educated. You know, I read a lot. Though compulsive reader I read everything mm -hmm. even the back of a cereal box <laughs> yeah your gran as well did you not try and strangle her oh yeah I did yeah yeah I tried to strangle her yeah um, lucky I didn't succeed really but she left us alone after that as well she she knew the time would come when we were going to start rebellion I don't know why my brothers didn't do it before me but um, yeah she left us alone after that what happened? Um, she was hitting me mum. And I thought, I ain't having it. And I watched it a lot of times and I just jumped in and got around her throat. Uh, I surprised myself how strong I was. Because <laughs> she was a big old bird, like a big old washerwoman, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like you see on the films and that, yeah. And uh, yeah, I got her down, put me knee in her chest, started to strangle her. And... Uh, I think it was my sister, Sister Della, um, pulled me off or hit me with something. I can't remember now, <laughs> but it got me off anyway. I, I was right. I got a terrible temper, so it's it's easing off a bit now. But I was known for losing my temper very quick, very quick. Were you very protective over your family? Yeah, over my sisters. Yeah, oh yeah. Mind you, I was the youngest and the littlest, but. Yeah, I've always stuck up for my sisters. 
Oh, there's only one left now. There's only me and me, me sister Sissy left now. All the others have died. <clears throat> the last one died about three years ago. My sister Pat, two years ago. My sister Pat, she died. But they all left home. My, my sister's left home very early. Uh, Della left home when she was, she got adopted out <clears throat> when she was about 12, I think, something like that. Uh, Peter, Peter and Ted were put into a home, into a home at Red Hill. <clears throat> and a place in, in Bankstead called Beach Home, which wasn't, wasn't a very nice place by all accounts, you know what I mean? I spent a week there, but they come and got me after that and uh, took me home again. But uh, none of them, they had, they had it worse than me. It's just that I've decided to stop talking about it. But it took me a long time to talk about it. It wasn't until Martin. Martin's probably the first person I've really told about it, and he put it in a book. Yeah. Why do you think people bought all that sort of stuff up for, for their whole life? Do you think that's a man's thing? But I think women can hide a lot of pain over the years as well. So sometimes it takes people 20, 30, 40 years to open up. When you're younger, it's fear. When you're older, you think to yourself, should I do it or shouldn't I? And uh, being the life I led afterwards, I suppose I should have done it earlier. <laughs> Did you feel better? Yeah, a lot better. After speaking about it? No, not after, well, I suppose I did have to speak, but I, bet, I felt a lot better after trying to strangle her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Were you always known as a, were you violent as a kid? Yeah. From a very young I, age? Yeah, I stabbed my brother Ted, my brother's, my sister Sissy. Uh, I never knew why I'd done that. I just, one afternoon, I just, we was all in the garden and um, I think it was a pair of old scissors. I just stabbed them both. And, uh, they both asked me why I'd done it, but i just done it. I don't know why. There was no reason. They was always good to me. i just done it. What about Dad? Uh, he left home when I was five, four or five. Uh, he was a safe breaker. He was a bomb disposal geezer in the army during the war and um, carried on blowing things up when he came out. But they were safes. Uh, he, he left home, he, he wasn't about. Uh, I started seeing him. They come, they come, my brother Billy come in to the house, cause we used to live two doors down from a pub, Prince of Wales in Cheam, and he said, the old man's in the pub. I went, he, he went, yeah, so I said, I'll go in and see him. So I went in and see him, and the first time I'd seen him for years. But um, we had a drink, but uh, didn't really feel much for him if you know what I mean mm -hmm. well he hadn't been there really do you think that plays a big part in your life you're not having that father figure the role model there's someone for discipline no do you think no. you're always going to end up the life that you've done yeah of course yeah, yeah your dad what, was a that's... fucking safe blower <laughs> anyway wasn't it <laughs> of course he was yeah <laughs> he said to me one day he said he said, he said well, why, why are you rubbing banks with a gun and I said well we're in and out three or four minutes you're there all night getting the safe open, we go in and make them open it. It's different, isn't it? What did you do? At, what did you? What age did you leave school? Uh, Fifteen. What did you do after school? Uh, I was a tree fella, landscape gardener. I went on the fairs before. I was on the fairs before I left school, working on the fairgrounds. Because we were related. My mum's a Smith, so we we're related to the Smiths, so which a big Romany family. So. I, Travelled all around with the fairground and then uh, come home, as I say, and started tree felling, uh, landscape gardening, turfing, fencing. I'm a very good fencer. Well, I, f I think I was. I mean, it was many years since I've done any of it. <laughs> well, did you enjoy the fairground? Yeah, I did, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I did, yeah. Um, jumping about on the dodgems and that. And Pick, I used to like it in, when the fairground closed you'd go around all the car, all the dodgem cars put your hand down the back of the seats because money and all that used to go down here purses, wallets everything used to go mm -hmm. down here yeah we used to have a yeah well, I liked it I quite enjoyed it I didn't enjoy the um, lack of um, washing and washing the you know things and all that because in this, in this year was family proper family you didn't go in the caravan we, we slept in a truck 
Did you feel like an outsider? No, 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 no. Everyone done it. They were all doing it. You know what I mean? It was, it was only old Mrs. Smith and old Mr. Smith who slept in a really beautiful caravan. She used to show it off at the fairs. People would come in and pay money. She was a fortune teller. Mind you, she got one thing right. She said, I'll come to a bad end. <laughs> Did she? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she said, she said, you'll come to a bad end, Joe. Well, I suppose I've, put, I've, I've done some bad things, but um, I'm not dead. I'm still here. I've been shot, stabbed, so. Run over. Yeah, uh, run over, <laughs> yeah, flung out of a window. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think she put a jinx on you? Uh, I think she'd have liked to, yeah. Did she ever tell your fortune? No, not really. She just looked at me and said, you're going to come to a bad end. You're a bad boy. Did she? Yeah, she said, you're a bad boy. Something around you, something, and tells them, tells them you're bad. Isn't it? Aroma, not aroma. Aura. Yeah, it's an aura around you. Yeah. I, I liked it. I was with them quite a, quite a long time till the school board officials come and got me. What happened? I just had to go to school. <laughs> was that what age were you? Oh, uh, uh, I was coming just coming out of 15. I didn't have long to do. But um, all my hair was growing long, you know what I mean, and all that, and I had an old teddy boy suit on and went to school like it the next day and got sent straight home. <laughs> Yeah, the Ed Master, Mr. What was his name? Can't think of his name. Mr. Mr. Howard, I think his name was. He was an old Spitfire pilot in the war. And uh, he gave me sixpence for an haircut. He said, go and get your haircut. Sixpence. Uh, spent out five quid now, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Five, ten quid. Yeah, and the rest is about <laughs> fucking 20 quid, the way people get that yeah, haircut. Yeah, yeah. What, so, do you think you'd have stayed at that? Do you think... Instead of going down a life of crime, or do you, again, do you think you'd have always went down that route? No, I've always gonna be, I was always going to be, a, I suppose you call it a villain, I suppose. Uh, yeah, I, I just like things. I just wanted, have, wanted the same as everybody else said. What was the turning point for you, going down a life of crime? What age? <laughs> About 13. <I> Early? <laughs> 13, 14, yeah. We used to, uh, well, I started, started thieving um, from... Um, Greengrocers and, and the bakers in Keene, because we used to take the veg sack of taters home, a couple of loaves of bread from the, um, the you know, they used to dry it all off and let it cool down. They used to have a big place out the back, take a couple of loaves and a sack of taters. And we had chips and something to eat three or four days. Yeah, I, I didn't I didn't really thieve to earn anything at that time, you know what I mean? I'm not, I don't class myself as a thief. I've never broken a house. Uh, uh, stolen cars, of course, but only to to use in later work, sort of thing. But I've never been a burglar or anything like that. I don't like burglars. I got burgled myself. Yeah, I got all my gear back. I, did you? I found out who took it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when did you start getting into the serious stuff? What age? Um, let's have a think. I was I was getting on a bit. Um, at 40, I think, something like that. The really serious stuff. I was Before that, I was doing betting shops and silly little things like that, you know what I mean? Come away with two or three grand. But then I met a mate of mine. Well, someone put us together. Someone wanted minding. Uh, this bloke, I can't... He, he, was, he had a big... Um, he was a manager director of a, a big... Um, grocer's firm, um, like Waitrose or something like that. He was a, it was Waitrose. He was a manager director of that. we would better take that bit out. Of. And his daughter, his, some kids have got his daughter on into porn on drugs. Got her into drugs and got her onto porn, taking pictures of her and all that. <clears throat> and he come, come to this fella called, used to be called Collars and Cuffs. He used to be a fixer. He used to arrange things for people. And he come up to me and Terry and in the red line at Sutton and said, you know, got a job if you want to earn a few quid so he said yeah wait a and he told us about it so we, we went and had a um, had a chat with a geezer and uh, persuaded him that what he was doing wasn't nice took the girl home, the girl home shot a few holes in his car uh, gave him a good hiding and uh, he left her alone after that in fact I think he moved away was that you kind of, were you getting a buzz for that life? Yeah, I was getting a buzz, yeah, getting a buzz. What was it? It, it was, is a buzz. Yeah, it, it of course. 
Is that a sense of power? I suppose it is, really. Yeah. I suppose it is power, really. Everyone does what you say, don't they, when you walk in a bank? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> they all seem to lay on the floor. What was it like doing your first bookies? I was only young. Uh, was it a knife or a gun? Gun. Uh, I never, never voted with anything but a knife it don't see much point you you've got to let them get near you ain't you <laughs> um, and no um, how old was I 16 17 what was that feeling like yeah it was good I had a pocket full of cash as well went straight out got some clubber had some shoes made Chain Village used to be a, a cobbler's there used to make a good shoe Got me suits, got a couple of suits made. Same bloke who made um, Ronnie Cray's suits and all that. I didn't know at the time, but it was the same geezer. Barry, Barry the tailor. And um, got a couple of suits made up and never looked back from then. Until I uh, got nicked up in Leeds. Went up there to um, do a wages, wages, wages snatch. We, we done, we done a bit of work down here and then the next day we went up there to do a bit and, um, come on top and, um, sorry to say, uh, I shot some people that day, four people, um, I blew an hole in the door and the door was supposed to be still lined, but it wasn't, it was one of them egg box things, you know what I mean? So we all just blew a big hole in it and, it four people, four women sitting behind it. Uh, it didn't hurt them much, which was lucky, really. I, mean, I, I was, I didn't, didn't, didn't want to hurt them. I had nothing against them at all. It had nothing to do with it. They were just going to work like we was, but they got hurt, and uh, I've always felt a bit of a regret over that. But when we come out of there, we changed cars a couple of times, and then we got into the last car. And a uh, little boy was going by with his mum. Now, we were all booted and suited, which was a mistake, really, because we was up north and they don't really, in them days, they weren't booted and suited, was they? And the little boy said to his mum, Mum, they look like bank robbers. And I what's a bank robber look like? <laughs> look like us, I suppose. And uh, she went, don't be silly. And they're driving home and uh, come on the news about the robbery and the shooting. And she thought about it and she found the old bill. And uh, they stopped us on the M1. We were driving along the M1 all pleased to, to get away, you know what I mean? And um, my mate said, there's a lot of traffic about. And my other mate said, there's a lot behind us. And I, said, and I looked forward and I said, well, that's why. There was a big coach across the road and up on the embankment was all the armed old Bill. They used to wear um, overalls, them blue overalls and a blue berry. And they was all up there pointing guns at us. So we decided to call it a day, you know. My mate said to me, whatever you do, because I had terrible tempers, I said, he went, don't lose your temper, because we still had the guns in the car. He said, don't lose your temper, please don't lose your temper. I said, you think I'm mad? We'll come in, the thing they wanted to, they wanted to shoot us, because we'd shot someone up there, you know what I mean? So um, that was it, we were captured. What were you robbing banks in suits? Were you robbing the banks in suits? In suits, no, no overalls, but a suit underneath. So Boiler just, suit, take it off. Just to take it off and yeah. let the pant blend in. If you didn't speak, you looked like a businessman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like, like I say, see when you started doing the bookies, holding the gun, getting some money, was there no turning back from you then? No, no turning it, back then. No, once, once, if you've had nothing and all of a sudden you've got something, you ain't going to give it up. You ain't going to give it up at all. I don't know who you, who you are. One minute you ain't got nothing, and another minute the next time you you've got a pocket full of dough, and you've got a nice nice clubber on, and having your shoes made and your shirts made. There ain't no looking back then, and uh, you can't you can't get that sort of money going to work, can you? Is that why it's so hard to walk away from that life? I suppose that is one of the reasons. Yeah, yeah, and I suppose there's a, um, I, I met some really good people. Um, Mostly in Parkers, <laughs> but uh, I've stayed friends with them for a long, long time. I, I never worked with none of them, but because uh, we only work with the same people all the time. But I met some some nice people in there. What I call nice, other people would say, yeah, I wouldn't call them nice. I'd say they're thugs and villains. But I found them very honourable, 
and always stuck to their word. If they said something, they'd do it. Or if they said they'd give you something, they'd do it. But if they said they was going to do something and you was in the wrong end of it, you was in trouble because they would do it. In prison or out of prison, didn't matter where you was. What was the feeling doing your first bank, Ronnie? <clears throat> Were you nervous or were you just so used to it now? I was nervous. Yeah, of course I was. Yeah, yeah. I was nervous until everyone went on the floor. Then I knew I was in control. <laughs> Trouble is, the cashiers went on the floor and all, which was no good. So there was no one to open the door to let me round the bank. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, once once um, once we got it, I mean, what to do when you first go in, make sure you can get the doors open to get behind the jump, to get someone to take you down to the Peter, down to the safe, and then uh, you're all right. Was it all kamikaze jobs, or did you try and watch out for the players' timing? So oh, yeah, we, we'd, we'd watch out. Or were you yeah, just going watching, in yeah. straight away? Well, the best, best time was when um, we'd, we'd be driving around, like going for a bit of breakfast or something like me and Dill do now. Not that we were looking at robberies now. But <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we'd drive around and uh, you see security vans delivering money. You see them, they get out, they get the different boxes. We always know what was in, how much was in a box by the different colour. The bags, it was in them. They do boxes now, and um, so that one I do us. We do that. We do that, and we watch it a few weeks. And because they used to walk in, put the money over the counter, <coughs> then walk out again. They leave the money on the floor, behind the jump, but on the floor. Then, then, then when they had time, they put it in the safe. They didn't put it straight in the safe. So you you jump over the counter. It might be under a grand laying there, seventy five grand. You know what I mean? Didn't even have to go to the safe for it. So you you got that. The bills are all going now. So you got the money that was in the box, but just been delivered. And the other mate would be scooping the tills out, and and underneath the counter they keep all the fifties, twenties, fivers. But there weren't no fifties then. But it was all twenties and fivers and tenors. Scoop all them out. The old cricket bag. Get it. Try and get as much as you can. <laughs> and uh, then I'd say, time to go, and we'd go. There never any argument about how long we was in there. If I said we had to go, we had to go, you know what I mean? Because they was on their way. Nine times out of ten, you could hear them. They weren't far away. You know, just stroll out and just poodle off down the road. When does the greed kick in, though? <clears throat> when does the greed kick in? If yeah. you know the bells are going, the police are coming, and obviously if there's still money to be got, is it hard to leave money behind? Well, you've got to, haven't you? When I picked a load of money up once that was on the counter, there was no lady there. And I picked it up and I went and I thought, that's her money, the old girl's money. We never nicked off the customers. I, th I thought it was something they was paying out, but it was her money she was paying in. So I put it back for her. I'm oh, sorry about that. Said, well, thank you, thank you. <laughs> went, don't worry, you're all right, we're not going to hurt you. Yeah, I hope she, I hope she don't remember that because you can get me nicked now, can't <laughs> <laughs> Did anybody ever try and be a hero? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so a couple of people tried, but one old bird was throwing tins of peas at me in a, in a supermarket when he was doing security call. A cracker, a tin of peas at me. <laughs> I went, oh, she was, uh, <laughs> oh, fair game to her. I didn't, I didn't shoot at her or nothing like that. She was just an old old lady. Thought she was doing the right thing, you know, lobbing tins of peas. Hmm. Processed. <laughs> <laughs> How many people were in your fun run? Well, there was there was six of us, but we never never all used to go at the same time. You know, I'd do something with you and someone else, and you know, I, I never never ever was six of us on the job. It was too many people mm -hmm. trip over each other. You know what I mean? What's the largest job you've done? Can you talk about that? Or one of the largest? Mm, well, they're all hard, but um, the, the one where. Um, they was roaring up, the, yeah, because yeah, they, they heard them coming, and um, we started to drive one. I said to my mate, what are we running for? I went, we got guns. I went, they're a plod. They ain't got no guns. They're in them city panda car things. So we shot around the corner, pulled up. I jumped out. <laughs> they come flying around the corner, seeing me standing there. I let a couple go. They turned around and shot off. There wasn't a mention of it in the paper and nothing. They never said they ran away. Well, I don't blame them. <laughs> Why did they not mention that? I don't know, because they, they ran away, I suppose. What was the coppers like back then? Same as they are now. 
nice people. <laughs> <laughs> when was the first time you got the jail run? Armally, in Leeds, on the Leeds, on a bit of work at Leeds. Um, <clears throat> got nicked, <clears throat> nicked on that. And uh, that, that was a 12. Got a 12 for that. Well, I got 90 odd years, but I only had to do 12. How so? Well, they, they give you 10 years for this, 10 years for that, 10 years, and you do the IS1, don't you? If it, run if it runs current. concurrent, yeah. if it don't run concurrent, then you're in bother. Mm -hmm. But 12 was long enough. Was that your first sentence? Mm. How old were you? How old was I, Mark? 30, I think. 30, yeah, so, yeah, I was 30, yeah, 30, yeah, 30, yeah. So you get away with everything from 16 to 30? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never done nothing wrong since. <laughs> what were you thinking when you got the 12? Uh, well, I knew I was all right. I mean, I, I went to Parkhurst. Um, I knew most of the people there, and everyone knew I was with Joe. I mean, I got there, Ron and Reggie were waiting for me. Uh, boxes of tea bags and coffee and sugar, powdered milk, tobacco, chocolate. Yeah, they had it all, right, all for me. The screw said to me, he went, um, when I got there, it was two in the morning. And he said, uh, we've come all the way down from up north. And he said, you must be someone special in. I went, why is that, Governor? And he said, uh, there are two people waiting to see you. And I thought, God, it's old Bill. And it was Ron and Reg. I'd never met them before, but, but they knew I was a friend of Joe's. And they'd let them come over. Well, they, they didn't let them. They probably told them they was coming over. And... Um, they were waiting for me with a big parcel of gear and everything. Yeah. How was Joe Pyle? Because I know you were very close with him. He was obviously one of the, the biggest names in London as well, if not the biggest, people say. But <clears throat> how did your relationship start with Joe? I was 16 when I first met Joe. Uh, I was drinking. I was, a drink, I was going to the pubs at 16 and um, Joe was in there. We read line at some, everyone used it. And um, he sent me a drink over one day. So I said, thanks very much. He, he went, come over, come over and drink with us. So I went over and drink with him and a few other faces, you know, older faces than me. And um, had a few drinks. He said, do you want to go to work? I knew what he meant. I went, yeah, of course I do. And that was it. I went to work. Was that like a father figure for you? No, not a father figure. I respected him a great deal. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I had a lot of respect for Joe. Everyone did. Still do. You know what I mean? You don't, you don't hear someone saying anything bad about Joe. Why was he so popular? He was straight. And you could trust, you know, you could trust him. And uh, people used to go to him with problems, you know, if it, we fell out with someone over, over North London or somewhere else. And... Uh, you didn't want to have a war with anyone. You go and see Joe, and Joe would sort it all out. You know what I mean? Call you all together and say that we don't, you know, don't need all the violence. Let's talk about it. And it was usually over something fucking silly in a club, something like that. You know what I mean? So then you, you should just get sorted. What was part cost like? When I got there, uh, I think it was 1976, 77, <clears throat> it was. Uh, Old 800 people, it's got cells for 800 people. Uh, there was 186 of us there. Uh, it was dirty. It was infested with rats and mice, cockroaches. Anything that crept and crawled was there. It, it was a filthy nick. Uh, the, the sewers weren't working. They, they dug the sewers up and then the screws went on strike. The big strike, do you remember that? No. Oh, I don't suppose you would. No. <laughs> they were one of the strikes, so the sewers got left open, and then the place come absolutely overrun with rats. It was everywhere in the kitchens, everywhere uh, in your cells, in your bed. Poxy things used to get. God knows how they used to get where they got, but they got everywhere. Yes. And it weren't a very clean nick. What was Reggie and Ronnie like? Yeah, they was all right. Yeah, um, they were good to me. Very good to me. I was, I was Kate's minder for eight years, you know, Katie Cray. Mm -hmm. I never had to look after her, really. <laughs> her name was enough, wasn't it? But I, I used to just go around, take her out places, me and Cornish Mick. 
to go everywhere with her. You know, she used to go and open a lot of shows up, and we'd just go there and uh, just make sure she was all right in it. You know what I mean? How much pull did they have in prison? Were they still a force? Oh, no, yeah, they, they still had a lot of pull. They still had a lot of pull, not as much as Joe, but they had a lot of pull because they'd been away a long time, so they'd lost a lot of, uh, lot of the effect of being who they are. But yeah, they, they had a lot of pull, especially, especially with the screws. Who else were you in with? Uh, Freddie Foreman. How was Fred? Oh, he was a gentleman. Always a gentleman. Bertie Costa. He, he was a good arm robber. Who's he? he, he he's dead now. He was, he was an arm robber. He was a boxer as well. Yeah, Bertie Costa. Um, it's hard to remember their names. I can see their faces, but uh, anyone who got nicked in that in that time went to Parkhurst. Everyone, everyone was there, you know what I mean? And some of the names I don't want to say because they probably might be straight now. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Is that a Category A prison? Oh, yeah, yeah. It was top security, yeah. Category A prison, yeah. Did anybody ever try and escape? Yeah, quite a few times, yeah. A couple of, couple of people got out. One geezer got out underneath the uh, underneath the uh, petrol lorry, you know, the con- tanker come in. Got out under that, and then, and then they tried to hijack that, and the next time they tried to hijack it, but well, they did hijack it, and rammed the gates. But um, them gates are big and heavy, they're old-fashioned, you know what I mean? Mm. It, it didn't go through. But the tear-up afterwards was a good one. Everyone was fighting. <laughs> everyone seems to join in. When when some, when there's trouble with the screws, everyone joins in. Well, all the proper people join in, you know what I mean? The ones who ain't proper run annoyed. But, um, yeah, there are quite a few good tear-ups in Parkhurst. Well, not good, but I suppose. But uh, quite a few tear-ups in Parkhurst. See a geezer um, on Sunday morning. He's queuing up for breakfast. You just get cornflakes on a Sunday. A bowl of cornflakes. One scoop. Have you a lot. <clears throat> and this bloke um, never used to come down for his cornflakes. So the bloke said, give us his cornflakes. Screw it. And the bloke come down for him. First time ever, sort of. He's he me cornflakes. He, no, he's gone. And uh, the bloke was just going to start his way up the stairs. And uh, he just stabbed him. Killed him. Over a bowl of cornflakes. Ridiculous, isn't it? How cheap life is in prison. Well, in them sort of prisons. What's the worst thing you've seen in prison? Young kid getting raped. I didn't like that at all. Mm. Yeah, I didn't like that. <clears throat> yeah, that was the worst thing I've seen. The only violence isn't, comes, becomes natural in prison, but rape ain't a... And sort of thing you want to attach yourself to, is it? Yeah, that's fucking disgusting. Yeah, disgusting. Yeah, and he was screaming and all. Uh, and I said, I said to him, oh, "This ain't right. And they, what can you do? There was six of them." So uh, I think the kid topped him. No, he didn't. No, they moved him. No, they, they didn't top himself. They moved him. He went to another prison. Yeah, because once he'd been raped, he was going to be raped all the time. You know what I mean? There were six of them on the kid? Six well, people? Yeah, six of them. Yeah, I don't know if they all raped him, but I was holding him and all that, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah, see, I think that stuff fucking weird. Like, Terrible. it goes in prison, like, whether you're fucking gay or whatever, I'm not asked, I don't care, but it's that sort of stuff that I don't like. like yeah, say, no, and I, it's, I didn't, I didn't These like are a lot of high-profile names who do this shit. And you're thinking, are you really a gangster if you're no, doing these, that No, these weren't high-profile names. These were, well, not what I think are called high-profile. A couple of them well-known, but um, they weren't They weren't the sort of people we'd mix with, you know what I mean? But was Ronnie Cray, was he not into that sort of shit? No, no, Ronnie Cray didn't rape anyone. He's always, always buying people fags and chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Because obviously you hear stories. I don't know about Reggie. I know Reggie yeah. was more... That's his cufflink. That's Ronnie's yeah, cufflink. Yeah, he was so. more calmer. Yeah. But obviously you hear the story. But I've never lived that life. You've been yeah. there first hand. Reggie, Reggie was the most dangerous. Was he? Yeah. If Ronnie had an argument with very Italians, do you? Or try and do you? Reggie would wait. Why did they put them both together in prison? I don't know, really. Well, Parker's was the place, wasn't it? There weren't nowhere else like Parker's, was there, at the time? Mm-hmm. Then all these new prisons started opening up. 
<clears throat> they weren't together for long, only, only a year, I think, something like 18 months. Then Ronnie went to Broadmoor. That was in 77, I think. 77, nearly 78, I suppose. They, one morning, come down, we used to go and have a cup of tea together in the cells, you know what I mean? <clears throat> I said, where's, where's Ron? They said, uh, they swagged him last night. I said, was he down the block? Oh, and the punishment thing. They went, no, he's gone. And found out from a screw later on, and they took him to Broadmoor. Was that planned from Ron, or was he losing his mind? I was losing his mind, yeah. yeah. I used to go and visit him in Broadmoor, me and Joe, and um, it ain't a very nice place anyway. But when you're sitting there, you know what I mean, you think to yourself, he was behind me, what's his name? Um, Yorkshire Ripper. He was sitting behind us. And uh, Ronnie, Ronnie told him to move. He went to move somewhere else. And his missus come in and Sonia, I think her name is, something like that. And uh, I don't know how she was visiting him, to tell her the truth. <coughs> and um, when, we, when we went out for a bit of dinner, because you can visit all day, went in this pub for a visit, a bit, a bit of dinner, and she come over and she said, oh, I see you in the prison. Can, we, can I come and sit with you? And we went, no, you uh, effing can't. You can't sit with us. She couldn't understand it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Were they not drinking whiskey and all that? And they were all suited and booted back then in Broadmoor. They had all the good suits and yeah. drinking whiskey. I know people who used to take booze up for them in yeah. the prison. Is that correct? Yeah. I, 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 used to, I used to have a bottle of vodka every week in Parkhurst. In most prisons I was in, though, in, you know, once you get known and you find out which screw's bringing it in, you uh, just have a bottle of vodka on a Friday or a Saturday, depending on what time he could get it in. Yeah, it's a couple of us, business puddings. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like coming out? Did you, was it straight back to business or were you thinking? No, no, I left it about four or five days. Yeah, that's then, not much. <laughs> well, I was skimp, wasn't I? And uh, back to work, yeah, back to work. Were you n more nervous, though? Because obviously if you know no, you get caught, no. you're going to get a bigger sentence. Didn't matter then, I was used to Did you to, not care? You know, I didn't care then. Do you well, think, I didn't want to get caught. Do you think because you were in prison with all the top the top guys as well, you think, fuck it, I can handle it, so it wouldn't matter if you get caught or not? No, it, it, well, it matters if you're caught, because you're going to do a lot of bird. But uh, the people I was in there with, you know... They were all good people. Well, most of them. They all, you know, all proper people, not idiots. Not like you get here. running around in the, some nicks. You know what I mean? Setting fire to things. This that, and the other. We do our bird, play kaluki, have our drink, have our puff. Screws leave us alone. We leave them alone. Were you puffing back then? Because I know you're still puffing now. But were you puffing yeah. back then? I, what um, was a hash? Usually solid. Soft black? Yeah, black, yeah. And yeah. that was strong. My grandad used to yeah. smoke that old Joe. He had to roll it out. He cut old it Joe. into strips. He smoked that right up to he was nearly 90. Bloody hell. Yeah, he fucking loved that. I should keep smoking it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, old Joe. He yeah. was mad bastard, my granddad. Yeah. I, I, I hadn't tasted um, the green at all in, in prison, really. Um, it was mostly solid because it was easier. But you know how they bring it in. Yeah. yeah. Smoking asses. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same colour anyway, you wouldn't have noticed. <laughs> yeah, and um, just to have our puff, puff and our vodka. Uh, we used to have a good fry up, a cook up on a, on a Saturday or a Sunday. Um, get some meat from the from the kitchen, give someone half ounce. Get a couple of bits of meat, you know. I mean, it wouldn't be the best because it worked good. The screws took all the best time. We get a few bits of um, bits of steak. Well, we thought they were steak. They tasted like steak then. And we'd have a cook up on a Saturday. Bit of, bit of rice, usually rice, rice with everything. Really, it's easier to cook. You couldn't, you know, couldn't, they wouldn't let you have a chip pan full of fat, boiling fat because you upped it over someone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I see that. As it happens. I see a geezer get a thing in the kitchen. Yeah. The big thing of boiling fat over his head. And Ronnie done a geezer with a boiling boiling tea on. Yeah, all in the day's, day's prison. What was the screws like with you? Yeah, all right. They were ruthless back then, though, no? They didn't mind hurting people. 
um, when we had when we had the tear up in Parkhurst, um, what wing was it on D wing? I think it was. Yeah, we had we had a proper tear up there, and they brought the screws in from Albany and Camp Hill. All the prisoners were on the on the island together, and them screws didn't care. The other screws, we'd know who they were, and we'd get them a later day. But these screws come from a different nick. So they, they just beat the granny out of us. Even if you hadn't done that, you, know, but you, said, you might as well do something, aren't you? Because you're going to get beaten up anyway. So see, when you come out again, was it just straight back to business then? Just get some money, get that pillow Yeah, back. just get yourself started again, yeah. yeah. This time when I come out, I ain't done nothing. I haven't done anything. When was the last time you were in prison? <sighs> Bloody hell. I've been, I've been out nearly 30 years now, haven't I? I went away, the last prison sentence I'd done was with Charlie Cray, so yeah, that, was that what the, was that, 99? Was that the drug charge? Yeah. yeah. You weren't involved, was that a set up, was that bullshit? No, no, that was completely set up, yeah, was we that? Were, oh, a drug dealer, I believe, no. But you know yourself, because of your previous and people get convicted, people don't, everybody says they're innocent. Yeah, of course they do, well I was innocent then. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have gone on a drug deal up north. What was Charlie Cray like? Yeah, the gentleman Charlie. Skinter, always skinter, Charlie. Why? They stopped turning, didn't he? So uh, he was a fence, really, Charlie. How was it for Charlie? Because obviously his brothers had the reputation back then. Was it difficult for him to try and live up to their name? He, he didn't try and live up to their name. He'd done his own thing, Charlie. As I say, he was, he was a fence. He used to buy all hooky loads of gear. Uh, <clears throat> the fence, the, uh, the twins used to lead him a dog's life, really, have him running around everywhere, you know what I mean? doing this, doing that, do this. Half the time he didn't want to do it, but he'd done it because they were his brothers, you know what I mean? But they didn't treat him very well. They didn't treat him with a lot of respect, I don't think. No, they didn't. When did he come into your life? Oh, you know, I, he came in a long time before I got nicked. Uh, he used to come over to the wine bar, the winner's wine bar in, in Rains Park and uh, have a drink with Joe because I'd be there. And that's how we. That's how I got to, got to meet him. You know what I mean? And we, and we, then he started when uh, Joe, uh, Joe went away. I think it was, or, or was very. No, he went away, and uh, Charlie car carried on coming over, and we'd all drink together. Tony Lambriano, good mate of Dills. Uh, yeah, I know Chris. Yeah, and Chris Lambriano. Well, I'd be drinking with him this weekend. I hope the tough guys. They, yeah, they, they never right. broke. They never, because I think they'd done a sentence with. Oh, was it Jack the Hat Mother? I think they had to get rid of the body and. The, yeah, they did, yeah, yeah. they never yeah. gave fucking any evidence. It well, that's what Charlie sentence. got his 10 for. I mean, Ch Charlie never got a 10 for any violence he'd done himself. He got a 10 for disposing of a body or being knowingly concealing a body or something like that. You know, they always do you with something, wouldn't they? See that Jack the Hat? Was he not proper as well, though? Was he not a hat man? Um, no, Joe said he was proper. Joe, Joe quite liked him. He was quite upset when he went. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he was supposed to be all right. But... Uh, he was a big lump. Was he? He lived in Sutton. Sutton, you know, where, I, where we used to knock about. Yeah. Yeah, Chris was on. I like Chris. Chris Laviano. Oh, yeah, yeah. Staunch, man. Yeah. yeah. Just a tough old bastard. You can see he's proper. Yeah, I'll be drinking with him this weekend because I'm, I'm having a bit, bit of a a thing for me book and that. You know, just a few people coming over. And um, he's been coming over. He comes over with uh, Ronnie Richardson. Charlie, Charlie Richards, his wife, they, they always come over together. We have a drink, you know. Did the Crays ever speak about the Richardsons? Because obviously... Was no, that... not really. Could that never have been sorted with them? Did they not hate each other? No, not really. Where does that come from then? It just, just got blown up, didn't it? Did that... it, it, it happened when um, over the shooting in the club. That's what, that's what started it all off. But they weren't really at war with each other. You know, Fred would tell you, you know. They used to talk to each other all the time, you know what I mean? But um, just a silly argument, another thing, another argument outside a club. Uh, someone got stabbed. Uh, I think it was a little fellow shot someone. I won't say his name because I don't like him. Uh, evil little one. And um, he shot someone and got shot himself. <coughs> Yeah, but um, they, were, they were, 
I won't say wonderful days, but they, they were funny days, you know. I mean, I don't think I'd like to have missed them all. Do you miss them? Uh, I do, yeah, yeah. I miss um, the excitement, the... Uh, the thrill? The thrill, knowing that tomorrow you're going to be doing so-and-so, you know, I mean, bank or van or whatever it was. Build yourself up. It's a bit of a come down afterwards. Once you've counted the money and had a share out, uh, what are you going to do now? Oh, I'll go down the pub, I suppose. <laughs> but it is psychotic behaviour. Like even all these men, you're saying they're good men, they're all fucking psychopaths. They're all nuts. Oh, but I never want. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, it's like, uh, it's, uh, because, you, because I've spoken to enough people, and some of these people, when they're in prison, form relationships with the serial killers, the madmen, because they, they don't see their crimes no. They're, they're just seeing them as a normal person, but for the outsider, yeah, they're thinking they're all it's, fucking it's only, psychotic. The only people you don't mix with is the sex cases. Yeah, fuck that. You don't mix with them. But nothing wrong with well, nothing wrong with a serial killer. That's a silly thing to say, but <laughs> they're not going to be a serial killer in there, are they? You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Who's the maddest person you know? Yeah. Is there anybody you came across and you think, oh, he's he's. <laughs> 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 was there anybody you were wary of I'm wary of everybody yeah you're always on edge you're always wary of people until you get to know them properly yeah yeah you're always wary always on your toes not so much now I mean I ain't doing nothing now but when uh, we used to go when me and Joe used to go clubs and that you always had to have your eyes in your back of your head you know what I mean don't, don't take a minute for someone to slip behind you do it and stick you mm-hmm. <laughs> I nearly had that happen to me twice in prison. Geezer tried to stab. <coughs> Geezer tried to stab me. Yeah, I didn't even know him. He just, uh, when the screws asked him why he wanted to stab me for, they, he said he just wanted to make a name for himself. Uh, the screw said, "And you wouldn't live the day if you'd have stabbed Ron. You wouldn't have lived the day." But he thought it was a good thing at the time, I suppose. Just a young kid. Yeah, young kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He got nicked with a, well, he said he got nicked with a very well-known family now that's uh, still about. He got nicked with him. I think he was a run-around for him or something. But he was full of himself. You know, I, I, I used to work for them, you know, a little firm and that. Well, they were a little firm, big firm. But um, he just wanted to make a name for himself. He thought if he'd done me, he'd have a bit of a name. Name uh, dropping was a name dropping all the time. Could somebody have possibly paid him though? And he's just said they wanted to make a name. No, 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 no. Well, I don't think so. I don't think I didn't fill out of anyone that bad. Mm-hmm. No, no, he just wanted to make a name. If it hadn't been me, it'd been someone else. Yeah, uh, yeah. The screw told me. He, uh, they asked him what he wanted. They wanted to stab me for. And he, he said he just wanted to make a name for himself. He said I don't know him. I didn't know him. I just seen him about. He was wearing. He had patches on. You know where he tried to escape. So you couldn't miss him, so there'd be yellow stripes all over him. But no, I never, didn't, never spoke, never even spoke to him. But he wanted me dead. Bless him. Did you ever come across Charlie Bronson? Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. off his fucking head, isn't he, Charlie? He, he sent me a letter last month, actually. And I've, I've got quite a few. Charlie used to send me a lot of drawings. And uh, <clears throat> I used to go and visit him. And um, he used to phone, phone me up and all that. And he was going to make a film. Well, Joe was going to make the film for him. And uh, I was going to be the technical advisor on prisons and all that. Yeah. And uh, But um, it never come off. Uh, something happened. I won't go into it now, but um, it just drifted away. And that was it. The film never got made. Do you think he'll ever get out? Well, I hope he would. I hope he would. A long time he's been in there. For a robbery? Uh, it wasn't even a robbery, really, was it? Well, it was a robbery, I suppose, but it wasn't a lot of money. 35 quid. No. Yeah. Not a lot of money, is it? But everybody deserves a chance. Now, there's people out there who've killed coppers, killed kids that are out after 10, 15 yeah, years. Yeah, I know, yeah. Oh, of course he deserves, of course he deserves, he deserves a chance. He, I mean, he'd, he'd earn his money just just doing television appearances, yeah, and and writing stories. 
and they, you know, he'd earn a good living for the first few years. If he put his money by, he'd be all right, wouldn't he? Mm -hmm. I mean, he would be a celebrity, wouldn't he? Yeah, he's a high-profile name, especially with the movie Bronson. Yeah. Tom Hardy played his part. Yeah, yeah, he did, yeah. yeah good actor, Tom Hardy. Yeah, he, great actor. He, he played the twins well. Yeah. He really did. He really looked like Ronnie. Played I said, I said to my missus, oh, he really looks like him now, and he's talking like him as well. He really... Made me shiver a little bit. <laughs> I think the old craze film though, was the one to beat with the guy who was the actor. Remember the old craze film, the old London one, the guy that was in EastEnders and stuff. Gary Kemp. Yeah, Kemp. Oh, Kemp. Yeah. Martin Kemp. Yeah, that was a great movie for the craze. Did that enhance their popularity though? Does that make them celebrities inside? No, I thought it was rubbish to the truth. Did you? The Tom Hardy one was the best. See, I thought the old one was the best. Uh, Tom Hardy was the most true to life one. Yeah. Because you've been round them, so you would understand what's yeah, real, what's yeah. fake. Yeah, no, the uh, the first that foot that one wasn't no wasn't no good. It was in, entertaining, but it, it went away from the truth a lot of the time. You know what I mean? Uh, but uh, one with Tom Hardy, that was near the truth. It was very good. What is the truth about them? Because obviously now they've passed. People say they they were going to kill them. They were going to do this. They were going yeah, to do that. Well, they it's easy to kill someone when they're already dead. Yeah, isn't it? of course. <laughs> but you, you know yourself, people people do waffle and talk pure shit. Especially yeah. now, everybody's got a platform to then make themselves bigger than what they are. But unless you've lived it or been around well, it, they, they, you don't they, have the answers. They can say anything they like about the twins now because they're not there to defend it, are they? Mm -hmm. I mean, they they were ruthless. They were. They did like hurting people. Well, Ronnie did. But. Um, that's just it's a life for the East End, isn't it? Really, they they sort of they made their mark and they thought they'd stick to it and earn a few. They didn't earn that much money, not really, not to what the other firms were like the Richardsons and that. They were earning, well, sorry, Charlie, but they were earning fortunes. You know what I mean? Were they more business Charlie, orientated? Charlie, Charlie's proper business man. Were the kids more violent, more ruthless? Where yeah, they just take it. Yeah, when Charlie had coal mines. Who, Emerald, Emerald Mines, everything. What makes a good gangster? Well, I don't think there is such a thing as a good gangster, but what makes a a good gangster is loyalty, truthfulness to your mates. You don't get much of that now, Ronnie. Well, Not my mates are, my mates are like that. Yeah, but that's old school. Oh, they're all old school, there's yeah. Kinda, there's yeah. a kind of code then, don't touch women, don't touch children. Oh, yeah, that was the code. Everybody well, kind of dressed is, the part. still is the code with us. Oh, well, yeah. there was snitching. It's all fucking... Grasses, grasses, child molesters, women beaters, burglars, muggers. They're all that. Again, they, you know, they're, they're, not, they're not villains, are they? They're not, they're not, not where they want to be. They're, they're just trying to make something else, but they ain't. So what happened with the Charlie Cray thing? How did you end up getting ripped in for that, if you weren't involved? Um... Charlie used to drink with us most weekends and uh, we used to go over, over to the, over a club over in Croydon and he'd come over to have a drink with us. And uh, his boy, his, Charlie's boy died. Uh, leukemia, I think, it was something like that. And he had a do for his boy at the at Fairfield Halls in Croydon. And uh, we went to that, me and Bobby Gold and a few other people people and Ch Charlie was talking to these two two fellas northerners he said Ron come over he said you should to these and uh, they looked apart the uh, nice suits Tom and all that but Dr Martins I thought it must be a northern thing isn't it? it's the old Bill thing isn't it Doctor, they can't get rid of their Dr Martins can they so uh, they, they said they wanted, wanted to buy some drugs so yeah, I know Charlie gave me the wink. What Charlie wanted to do was take their deposit and uh, give them that. There weren't no drugs, was there? There were no drugs at all. Making out we could deliver 300, grand, 300 uh, kilos of drugs. I mean, we, ain't that much in the country, I should <laughs> Well, I suppose there is now, but there weren't them days. And um, that's how it all come on top. I, I, I ended up taking a, a, a kilo of cocaine off of one policeman and giving it to two others <laughs> it was their coke and they give it to us I, I couldn't get hold of no coke so 
Charlie got a phone call, said, oh, so-and-so's got some coke. He put it in, you put, put your car out the back of the Crown in Morden, leave the boat open, and they put it in there. And uh, so I went back to my car. There was a kilo in there. So I said to Charlie, that's it. He said, well, take it. I'll take it to him. Said, all right. Yeah. They was there, and so was a load of other old Bill. So, so um, that was that. Me and Bobby were nicked. And then they nicked, Char they nicked Charlie indoors. The next morning, I think, something like that. What did you get? Nine. Yeah, nine years, yeah. Well, nine and a load of odds and sods, you know what I mean? But I had to do nine. Did you Not, know, it sounds like a set-up, though. Getting was gear a set from the corpus. Flayton. Flayton set up. The gear company, the old bill. We give it to the old bill. Oh, it was blatant, blatant, blatant set up. What are you thinking then? You've got a near enough a 10 for... Well, I wasn't very happy, but what can you do? Were you getting money from it? At that time, yeah, yeah. But, oh, but I would have done. Mm. If, it, if it had gone to the right people, I'd have got paid, wouldn't I? I'd, I'd have got a couple of grand out of it or something like that. You know what I mean? But I don't think the bloke who lost his kilo was very happy. Did they not charge you with 300 kilo, though? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What a bastard. Yeah, 300 kilo, yeah, yeah. How can they charge with the surveillance in you? Did oh, they have... it, was more, it was more than 300 to start with, but the judge said no one, it was 700 kilos or something like that, but the judge said no one would believe that. He said, we'll make it, we'll make it 300. <laughs> a, a, nine, a nine is actually okay then. They could have fucking threw the book at you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that your first charge with drugs? First offence? Yeah, I don't, I don't do drugs. I don't get, I, I puff, you know, I mean, I'm not a drug dealer. Did you ever snort coke back in the day? I snorted it once, didn't like it. Many years ago, many years ago. Yeah, I didn't like it at all. Made me nasty, more nasty. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you're better with the puff, it'll calm you down. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I fucking loved the gear back in the day. That yeah. was my my drug of choice, the coke. Was it? Yeah, I fucking yeah, loved that. I, I didn't, I, Never took to it. Well, I didn't, I didn't even puff until I went to Parkhurst. Mm -hmm. And the screw gave me a, a joint. He said, you need that. He said, you've got to calm down. They're going to send you to Broadmoor otherwise. I mean, give us that here. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that calmed you down? Did you ever get, speak to anybody about your history of violence? Did you ever get to no, speak to no, psychiatrists? No, loads of psychiatrists in Parkhurst. Half the place is full of psychiatrists. They found one of them wandering in the forest one Christmas Eve. No, New Year's Eve, naked. He was a psychiatrist in Parkhurst, running around naked in the forest. <laughs> he must have just lost his shit speaking to all the madmen. Oh, it must have sent him off his head, I should think. Yeah. Because I know a lot of people were scared to speak to the psychiatrist in case they get signed off at your nut house. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I should just say yes, no, or just go like that, you know, not answer. You couldn't go into a story with them because they swap it all around, you know what I mean? Was Broadmoor... An easier sentence, though? Or was it harder? Oh, it was easier. Yeah, yeah. Food's good. Did people try and pretend they were crazy to go there? Well, I never met no one who'd done that, but I should imagine they did. But I never knew anyone who'd done it. I mean, Ron was crazy. <laughs> yeah, he was nuts, sir. Huh? Yeah, he was nuts. Did he hear voices? He never said that, but... Mm -hmm. I mean, in prison you hear voices all the time. There's always someone talking along the pipe, and you go, what's that? It ain't, oh, it ain't for me, sorry. <laughs> mm -hmm. Where did you go and do your nine? Um, I started off in the unit at uh, Belmarsh. And then I went to Wandsworth. And then I went to Maidstone. Then I went to the open prison. Um, Ford? Ford, yeah, I went to Ford. But... Uh, no, I went. No, sorry, I went to um, a, a, a semi-open prison. No, Am Common. I can't think what it was called. Latchmere House. I went there, but the, years ago, in the beginning of my prison sentence, um, I took a governor hostage, and uh, thought no more of it. You know, done me a bit of extra burden, and uh, <clears throat> when I got to uh, Latchmere House. I thought, this is lovely, the food was good, you know what I mean, cells were clean, you have a shower when you wanted, lovely. 
And uh, what I didn't know was the governor there was on holiday and he was the governor that I took hostage. <laughs> so I didn't stay there. When he came back, I was gone. He moved me straight to Wandsworth. What's the worst prison you've been in? Wandsworth. Yeah. The eight factory. Did you ever come across Paul Ferris? Paul, yeah, 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 Paul Ferris, yeah. I played, played Kaluki with him. Who won? He did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Paul's proper, he's a yeah, Vicky Dark. Yeah, good. With proper Vixer. You can, yeah. you can just tell with people's presence they're not to be fucked with. There's yeah, a lot of kids on yeah, pretend people. gangsters yeah. who you think, nah, you've just not got it, but you know they've got it. They're well respected everywhere, and well, you can tell the way people speak about them. Well, if they told you something, it was true. Mm -hmm. that's, that's all you need to know about someone who's it? it, told you it's true yeah Vic I think he was taking coppers hostage he took a couple of coppers hostage he did yeah one of the robberies yeah, yeah, yeah. he cut off his own fucking ears I cut know. off his own ears in the jail yeah I can understand why he done that but um he was at Joe's funeral yeah how was it when Joe died how was it when Joe died terrible Terrible. He had a terrible illness, motor no run disease. Mm. He was a big man, Joe. Strong, good weightlifter, boxer. And he just went shuffling about, you know what I mean? It's terrible. We used to have a drink every Friday. We used to go around here, me and a few others. I'd take a couple of bottles of vodka and a bottle of Jameson's, what he used to drink. We'd sit there and have a chat and people would pop in box famous boxers who was, everyone used to turn up there uh, television stars film stars always to come around always on a Friday I don't know why but they used to come probably could drink my vodka but uh, they always, always to turn up there you know what I mean he was there quite a bit there the geezer out the bill um, Burnside I can't think of his name Chris Ellison he was always coming around to jail he was a nice fella I understand he's quite ill now. <clears throat> Ray, Ray Winston. Yeah, I like Ray. He's yeah. a great actor. Yeah, he is, yeah. He didn't come to Joe's funeral, though. I never understood that. Yeah, he did, he did apologise on telly the next day. On morning television, he was on there. He apologised for not turning up. Yeah, he plays a good villain and all, right? Yeah. Yeah, he does. Yeah. He was good in scum. Yeah. Who was the guy from the Who who played the part of the robbery? Roger Daltrey. Yeah. Yeah. What was it? What was he like? Not Roger, but the the guy he played. I didn't really have much to do with him. Joe Joe knew him. Uh, that was a great movie. Yeah, it was a great movie. I, I was they was make, make, making the film. Mick Vicker. And, yeah, and um, <clears throat> we went onto the set, and uh, the, the cell, the cell, the cell, and um, Mick Vicker's cell was built in a sort of a warehouse, you know, a big old warehouse. So when I went in, they he said, come and have a look at my cell. So I went in there. Uh, I said, hey, it's good, it looks right, but I said, it ain't right. He said, what's that? I said, that window. It don't get that much air. The, the opening was too big. It's eight inches by six inches, the cell, the window that opens in the old prison cells. Not like the ones now, they've got big ones down, big iron bars, but, and they changed it. Because I said it was wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a great movie. Yeah. And um, Charlie was with Charlie Richardson was with us that day when we visited the film set. And um, Charlie said to uh, Roger, I've got a bone to pick with you. You've made me out of grass. He said, what do you mean? It's only a film, Charlie. He went, yeah, you made me out of grass. He was really worried and all. Charlie was having a joke, wasn't he, but... Because, you know, he shouted after him, didn't he, when he escaped. Yeah, come back, Matt Vicar, and all that. But, yeah, I had a laugh about it. What do you think about the lifestyle now? Do you, obviously, you say you miss it, but do you ever have a, a conscience as well up with the robberies you've done and the, the women that was in the banks and the screams? Does that play a part in your mind? Because I know when you blew off that the women, door. women who got shot, I've always regretted that. Um... People on the in the bank, they're only scared for a couple of minutes and then you're gone, aren't you? And it gives them something to talk about for years, doesn't it? I mean, my, my, my girlfriend was in a bank 
they got robbed in Range Park. It weren't me. You <laughs> it, sure? Yeah, I'm positive, <laughs> yeah. I didn't know any. And that, that got robbed. A couple of black fellas run in them and uh, robbed it. They weren't very good. They left most of the money behind. <laughs> but there you are. Everyone at their own, own trade. Do you think you could still rob banks now, or do you think it's more difficult with CCTV? Oh, you can't rob banks now. There's no money there, is there? DNA. There's no money there. Mm -hmm. There's no money in there. No money in the bank now. Too many cameras. I mean, you could drive from here back to back to back to wherever. Two in a zone. There's a camera all the way that can track you from the moment you leave a building to where you're going. There's a there's always something that can track you. Even if you're, you know, you don't have to be a villain. They just cameras pick you up. They're, they're there all the time, aren't they? What about the Sweeney when they started having guns and shoot to kill? Yeah, I didn't think that was very fair. <laughs> Why? <laughs> oh, don't expect someone to shoot back at you, do you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, only joking. Uh, yeah, they, they, they were... They weren't Jack Regans uh, or, or Dennis and all them, little, but... but um, I, I knew one of them, well, I only knew him because he nicked me, but um, he got, I got talking to him and he'd come in the pub when I'd come out and I thought to myself, I know him, and I told him, that's a, a cosser who nicked me. And uh, he sent me a drink over. I sent it back, but he came in anyway. And then he'd come over, didn't he? I'd feel it. I went, no, I, said, I just can't drink with you. You went, old Bill, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, what people think of sending me a drink with an old Bill. <laughs> Cheeky bastard to send yeah. you over a drink. <laughs> but at least he sent me one over, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm surprised at that. But yeah. a fair play, like you say, you don't know. No. Yeah, but yeah. I'm surprised he stayed there, knowing that he's got someone, knowing that he's jailed you, and um, he's in there drinking. I suppose it's the worst thing you can do is beat up old Bill, and he not stop looking for you, did I? Yeah, you're fucked. You can't yeah, go I against them. Nothing, like yeah. they say, it's yeah. the biggest gang, and the UK is the biggest gang in the world. Yeah. They are the biggest gang. They're the biggest firm, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, of course they are. That's what Joe always said. They're the biggest firm. And they're more corrupt than anybody. Yeah. But one mistake. Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> so when you've done your nine, what, what age were you then? Uh, um, I'm terrible with dates. What age are you now? 78. You were, you were 60 odd when you came out, I think. Was I? 60s. Yes, I was, yeah. I had a birthday, didn't I? Yeah. Probably. What was that like coming out? Do you feel not a wasted life, but you spent over 20 years in prison? Do you, you 23. Do you question thinking you could have made better choices, or do you think you just that was just your life and no, you, you was, lived it as much as you can? Yeah, your life's already set out before you start it. You think I so? I think, yeah. I mean, you could change a lot of it, but I think the path you lead's always going to be there. You, you'll always be that person. You know what I mean? I mean if, I, if I had a little sweet shop, if I brought a little sweet shop now, I'd still be Ronnie Field. I'd still be the guy who used to rob banks, wouldn't I? About now and selling sweets. <laughs> How hard was it to try and make changes when you came out in your sixties <coughs> to try and let that life go? Was it difficult or was it easy? No, it was quite easy. I, I had sort of staunch people with me, um, people that were older than me. I mean, I ain't many older than me now, but at the time there was people older than me, you know. Uh, I was I was offered numerous things uh, to go on. I was offered a few bits of work. Fancy this, fancy that. There used to be a fellow who used to do the, do re recruiting people for firms. <coughs> and he come out. He said, "Do you fancy going on this, that, and the other?" I said, "No, I don't. I don't know more." I said, I "Missed me daughter growing up, you know what I mean?" So uh, I didn't want to do no more. I don't know whether my bottle had gone or not. I liked to, I hope not. I hope, I liked to think it hadn't gone, but I just didn't want to do no more. Didn't want to do no more. I'd like the money, but I'd, the thought of the bird, I thought was, oh, I'm a bit old enough for that now. You know what I mean? If I get a twenty now, <laughs> I ain't going to come out more. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the hardest thing, Ronnie? When away from your family? Is that your only child? I had two daughters, but one one died. Yeah, Sorry that's my only that. child. Yeah, yeah, Sadie. Yeah, she's a well and all. <laughs> Just like her dad. Well, she likes to fight. Yeah. Just like her dad. <laughs> Is that one of the hardest things then being away from family? Because no matter how tough you are, we've all got breaking points. The hardest thing is trying to get to know him again, because I was separated from my wife, 
and my daughter, of course, and um, I never see her for the first five or six years I was away. And then my mother-in-law, my ex-mother-in-law, because we just got divorced, uh, she brought her to Parkhurst to see me. They, they got a caravan on Parkhurst and just come over for a week and I'll see her every day for a week and we got got to know each other, you know what I mean? Well, as you can in prison visits, you know what I mean? She was more interested in who was sitting at that table and who was at that table. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Do you have any regrets? I, I, regret, um, I re regret losing losing a lot of my life. I re as I say, I always say I regret shooting in four women. That was never meant to happen. <clears throat> I regret uh, missing my daughter growing up. Uh, my marriage failed, which it would do. Most of them do. Um, yeah, I, I do regret it. I do do regret it, yeah. How hard is it to keep a relationship in that lifestyle? Because Terrible. everything has their effects. It's not just you. you because as men who do big sentences, who are proper, they can do the sentences yeah, on their head, sense, but, but, but it's the effect of the partners, the mums, the dads, weekend, the kids. Weekends are the worst because you're thinking, what, what are they doing now? Are they down the pub? But, you know, that's, that's the life you choose, isn't it? That's how it ends up. Would you change it? Nah, what's the point? <laughs> wouldn't be me, would it? It wouldn't be me. Is that the difficult thing with the mind in there with someone you love? Because it must be hard for the partners to struggle and, and spend 10, oh, yeah. 20 well, years away from them. Yeah, I mean, it's hard for them when the money comes <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I suppose it must be where it's got to be, isn't it? Can you get used in that life? People use you because of the reputation and the money and people try and... People use your name. Do they? Yeah, yeah, they do use your name. Uh, you find out a lot. People, people are geese are coming in the pub to um, have a row. I said, well, I don't even know you, mate. He said, no, hey, it sounds like I said you're going to do me because i done him. Oh, yeah, what are you talking about, mate? <laughs> he brought me a drink at show. <laughs> What's the biggest life lesson that you've learned? Life lesson? Don't get caught. They all do, though. I know. <laughs> they all do. Yeah. It's hard because when you're in prison, some of these men are doing 10, 20, 30, 40 years, but they're giving out advice of life. Look at the IRA men. Yeah. I mean, 30 years. I, I got, I mean, I don't, I don't like bombers and nothing like that, but I, I got quite friendly, very friendly with a, a, an IRA man. He was, he was an assassin, he wasn't a bomber. And I got very friendly with him. You know, could be in the unit together. We fought the screws together. Went on hunger strike together. You know, all the things you do. I mean, yeah, I got, I got quite friendly with him. But as I say, he wasn't a bomber. He, he was a, he was an assassin. I quite liked him as well. <laughs> as you say, he went up back and broad. <laughs> but the Irish are a different breed. There's something in oh, their yeah. blood. Yeah. They're not six feet two, tattoos, no. skinhead. They're five feet three, five feet four. Yeah, they'd blow you up. Fuck, yeah, and they would fucking put a bullet right oh, in your they head. Would, yeah, yeah. I walked by a cell one day and uh, it was all packed up with paddies and uh, they were all very quiet and one of them was talking. I said, screw what I did. He said, oh, it's a, it's a bomb-making class. I went, oh, <laughs> in Parkhurst, on the ones, bomb-making class. <laughs> yeah, because I've had some of the IRA guys on and UDA, but they're just built different. The Irish have got something in their blood. Yeah, they are. Um, yeah. They can fight and spit it. Yeah, I suppose uh, we'd be the same if someone yeah. come and took our country out. Yeah, some of them you would never realise the damage they've done. You wouldn't look at them. Sometimes you can, like Vicky Dark, you know he's he looks like a gangster. Some of these IRA men. No, you wouldn't. You, you wouldn't would never them. know. No. Most of them are young kids as well. I mean, they were so staunch. They were so staunch. If me and you, if I, me and you were fighting a couple of screws, and they they come, they, they didn't have to know what it was about. They'd jump in and help, help you straight away. They didn't know whether it was rights or wrongs or anything. You're having a go at a screw. They'd be there with you. Hunger strikes. They were there straight away. You know, I mean, they, they, hurts me to say because I don't I don't believe in blowing people up and all that. But um, they were very staunch. I suppose well, you know, they were a bit outnumbered. I suppose they had to be, really, but they was all staunch. Yeah, solid. Was there much suicide in prison back then? Parkhurst there was, yeah. Yeah. 
Well, not not so many suicide, attempted suicides. You know, I mean, I mean, not many people who really want to kill themselves. Some of the people just want to cut their wrist when the screws coming around. So he finds them sort of thing, get a couple of weeks in the hospital, don't they? Mm -hmm. <laughs> or outside hospital for a couple of nights. You know what I mean? But <clears throat> yeah, there was quite a few. I think when I was up in Armley, or was it Walton? One of the one of the prisons up north. It was four in one week. Oh bloody hell! It's a lot, isn't it? Yeah. All youngsters, all on their first sentence, all thinking three years was the end of their life. You know. <laughs> the other guy's come up to me once. He said, "He said I wish I was like you." I said, "Why's that?" He said, oh, "I'd love to do a big sentence. Wish I was doing a big sentence." I went, "Go and stab that screw." I went, "Here, go and stab that screw." He went, "Well, I went, go and stab him. You'll get a big sentence then." Oh, I couldn't do that. <laughs> That's crazy yeah. thinking. What do you think? What's a big sentence? What do you think looking back in your life? Um, I've not had a bad life, really. I've quite enjoyed myself. Um, uh, I've never had a really strong relationship with anybody except for the close circle I'm, I'm in sort of thing. You know what I mean? I don't... Got a lot of lot of mates, not many friends. If you understand what I mean, is that easier though? Going through that life with a smaller better. circle, it's easier. Yeah, of course it is. Yeah, you, you can only trust a few people. You can't, you can't trust the people who's standing in the pub who talks to you every night. And you don't really know him. You only know that he drinks light and bitter or something, and that's all you know about him. And he starts asking you things about this, that, and the other, or telling you things you don't want to know. Oh, yeah, I don't really want to know that, mate. You know. <laughs> What do you miss most about that lifestyle? The excitement, I suppose. And the money. <laughs> More the money than the excitement. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a big buzz to tip out a box or a bag and see it all come out. Were you still getting a buzz or does the novelty wear off? No, it never wore off, no. <laughs> <laughs> Just as well you never done those psychic reports. You would be off to Broadmoor on a fucking heartbeat, on it. It's... Uh, because like you say, because you've lived that life, it doesn't seem anything. Because I've interviewed people and they think, ah, my story's not interesting. Well, and I don't I'm think thinking, Mom would be Martin said. Yeah, you've lived the life, you've lived the tale. And people love true crime. As much as people can have an opinion and say, oh, they're still bad men, they've done bad things. People love to hear those stories because every man thinks they're a gangster. Every man. But 99.9% .9 are full of shit. They've never... That's why true crime is so popular on Netflix and the, the books yeah. are so popular mm. because people love the criminal aspect of life, especially London was popular for it. That was the, the hub of gangsters. They really started it. Obviously, you've got the mafia, Italy yeah. and America. They were, I believe, they were a well-run organisation. Yeah, they um, are, yeah, yeah. They're very well-run. Because I know Joe Pyle, he was, was he not with friends with the Gambino family? The Gambino family, yeah. How did that connection start? Joe went to live in America for a little while, yeah, in Miami. And of course he was known. And um, it just blossomed from there. Hmm. They knew who he was. And uh, they just went on from there. That's a different ball game there. I've seen New York in the, like the 60s, 70s and 80s. They're different than London villains. Yeah. and But the only thing is they all turn queens. They all become snitches, majority of them. But they're all staring at 100 years, 150 years. So they just start singing. It doesn't matter if you're going to get 20 or 100. If yeah. You, when, you, when you get to a certain age, it doesn't really matter, does it? <laughs> yeah. But I think that's different with the London boys. I think they're more stronger mentally. The Mafia boys, they all turned, majority of them. Obviously Gotti and that, I don't think he did, but um, some of the men I've spoke to in America last year, some of them were staring at 100 years, 100. Some of these guys have killed 10 and 20 people. Oh, Serial yeah. killers. Yeah. Fucking serial killers do yeah. a deal and they're out in five years. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. I've, I've, met, I've met a few, um, I suppose they must have been mafia geezers who's come over uh, see Joe and that, you know what I mean? But I um, always found them very polite, very gentleman. They didn't ever think they had to buy any drinks, so. Miserable bastards. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, Joe didn't think they had to buy a drink either. <laughs> That's how a lot of these people have got money, though. Yeah. Keep their hands yeah. in their pockets. Yeah. Who was the most respected in that lifestyle? Well, in England. Yeah. Joe. Was he? Joe Fred. Well, there's, there's a few. You know, Joe, Fred, 
Kenny Noe. Yeah, Kenny's proper. Eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dick Dark. Yeah, you know, there's, there's still some proper people out there. You know what I mean? Yeah, there's still, like you say, people still got that reputation of yeah. that villain. But some people do talk shite, man. Some oh. people you think, fuck me, like... Oh, I've been lambing with them sometimes. <laughs> it's like a competition. Yeah, who can talk the most bollocks, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What did you think about writing your book? I've enjoyed it, I've enjoyed it, yeah. I didn't want to do it, to tell the truth, and uh, I didn't think there was nothing to write about. But uh, Del suggested it, Martin took it on, and uh, we... Me and Martin become quite close friends, really, haven't we, Mark? Yeah. Yeah, you still won't lend me no money, though, but... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Were you surprised how popular it become? I was. I was, yeah. I got a phone call today from someone who's just come out. He's just finished 27. He phoned me up, hello, Ron, I'm out and about, you know. He said, um, I'm over in North London. He said, everyone's talking about you over here in your book. I said, have you brought one yet? He says, I hope you just give me one. I said, well, you better buy one while you're over there, aren't you? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was it like therapy for you? Was it hard? Sorry? Was, was it hard going over old stories? Childhood was hard. But after that, I sort of got into a flow, you know what I mean? Things kept coming back, and, and things coming back now, what I've told you, what I hadn't told Martin. <laughs> That's the only thing, because sometimes being from the old school morals, you feel like a grass doing a book or speaking about certain things, but... It's just the way of the world now. It's just yeah. you speak about the things you've done, things you allegedly done. If you look, read my book, well, you, as you say you have, you, I'm not doubting you. Um, every person in there I, I talk about properly is dead. I, I wouldn't talk about anyone who wasn't dead. And I can tell you, I can say what they've done then. I can say, oh, he, he robbed this bank, he robbed that bank, but he's dead now, so it doesn't make no difference. What was the best bank job you've done? I can't tell you. <laughs> and you're not, not get caught for that one. What a number have they said you've done, allegedly? How many banks? Oh, I played now 29, something like that. They don't get fortunes out of all, every bank, you know. You Sometimes you only come away with three or four grand. Sometimes you come away with quite a lot. <laughs> what's, the, what's the least you've come away from? Least? Uh, 1,500 quid, so. <laughs> What's that? And you could have got a 10 for that? Yeah, it went that hard, I know. <laughs> when did they start putting ink? In the cases? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I never had one blow up on me. But you only got to throw them in a freezer, haven't you? Just freeze it out, smash freeze it. Freeze them in, leave them in for a week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know it's hard to leave all that money for a week. But yeah. Usually you can freeze them. I think, they, I think they use something else now that don't freeze, but in my day, it, it, you could freeze it. Yeah, it's a, it's a mad lifestyle, but it is glorified crime especially with the gangsters and all the movies, as we do glorify it because people, like I say, oh, everybody wants to be a gangster. Every yeah. man thinks they're a gangster. But there's only a few, like you say, you've lived it firsthand where people are proper. No bullshit. No fucking over. Obviously, people turn. Did you, did you lose a lot of friends or did you always have your circle small? I always had a small, small circle, yeah. Yeah, always. Did yeah. Joe tell you that or was that something you learned yourself? Well, I, I, I just noticed it with Joe. He had a few people close to him. He had thousands of mates. But people close to him, people who, who was coming to the house, and that, it, was, it was all just a few of us, you know. How hard is that, obviously, when you start getting older and you start losing people who you've grew up with, your loved ones, is that difficult? Well, it is, yeah, because um, there's there's, you haven't got that many friends to fall back on. I mean, you know, when Joe died... Um, it was a um, quite a blow, really, you know, because I used to go out with Joe every weekend, uh, around his house during the week, you know what I mean? Drinks and that. If anyone important turned up, he'd find me up, come round. Yeah. So, so you, when, when someone dies, you miss all that, you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. then people didn't come to see you, they come to see Joe, and you, but you was there. If you get what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Are you still drinking vodka now, Puffin? Oh, I would don't if you off me one, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I should be drinking a few in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you go? Do you just drink in the local? Yeah, just around, around Range Park, innit? Yeah. Do people know who you are? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. 
Well, after the newspapers come out, they did, yeah. They big spreads in the newspapers the other week. But, um, yeah, well, with Rain's part, they know, they know who I am, and Sutton, uh, probably a few other places. How's your relationship with your daughter now? <laughs> we just fell out. Well, <laughs> no, we're all right, we're all right, really. We all went, we fall out now and then, you know what I mean? But uh, I wouldn't do without her, she wouldn't do without me. Have you still got that in you? Do you still feel 21, 31 in your 30s where you've still got that mindset? Do you still feel sharp? As if you could do something? Yeah, I think I could do something. I wouldn't be able to... <laughs> I'd have to sit down and do it. <laughs> <laughs> do you see the change, though, with the 60s, the 70s, people wearing the suits? Obviously, you've got the suits on, you've got the braces, Always looking sharp. Do you see the change, though? Do you look around and think, what the fuck has happened? Yeah, everyone looks scruffy now. Yeah. yeah. I always wear a suit if I go out, or a sports jacket. I, mean, I wouldn't go out in a pair of jeans. Uh, what do you think of the UK now? Is there a UK now? Yeah. <laughs> do you look around and see no, so like, many changes? Oh, don't start me off. Yeah. No, country's finished, really. It's been took over by foreigners and everything else, you know what I mean? Um, even pitching tents in Hyde Park now, not in Hyde Park, in um, where all the hotels are. Um, Park Lane, there were tents up there now. I mean, if I put a tent up there, I wouldn't be there long, would I? They'd move me, I won't move them. Where do you go forward for the future, Ron? What's your plans? Same with them doing now. Pottering about, look, look, look after my garden, take my dog for a walk. Well, the dog takes me for a walk, I sit down, the dog goes for a walk. And um, just enjoy myself. What dog you got? It's a, it's a lurcher. Old lurcher. Yeah, dogs are the best. Uh, my my uh, fifth rescue dog it is. Yeah, always rescue them. Yeah. Go in, go into Battersea, <clears throat> pick, the, pick the first one, the one they're going to put down, and we'll have it. We'll have it. Pay the fees, the vet fees. Well, they get it right and then we go and collect it, bring it home, just carry on giving its treatment, isn't it? Why can't you do that? Boy, that ain't a dog's fault, is it? Mm. I, mean, I, love, I love me dogs. Yeah, but I've got a Rottweiler. Have you? I fucking love him. I had yeah. a boxer beforehand, but he was crazy, man. I had yeah. a big boxer. I, I, I just love dogs. I'm going to get more. Um, just obviously they say it's a man's best friend, but it's, I think it's the loyalty. I think it's the love. I yeah. think it's the affection that they give you. And that's men are simple creatures. That's all we want to feel. Loyalty, that's all we want. That's respect. all they want. That's yeah. all they want. They just want to be loved and petted like me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, I wouldn't. I, I couldn't live my life without a, a dog. How are you feeling today? Thirsty. Yeah, I better <laughs> let you go then. But Ron, listen. Like I say, I'll leave the uh, the book link in the description for people to go and buy the book would you like to finish up on anything else Ron? No don't no, don't no. uh, Martin, Martin's put a lot of work into the book and um, I think it is a good book people have told me it's a really good book and a really good story just go out and buy it Give me some money for my old age. <laughs> get your vodka in your pipe. <laughs> for anybody watching Ron that's maybe want to get involved though in a life of crime what advice would you have for them? Don't do it <clears throat> don't do it <clears throat> them days are gone the days are gone and the old bill ain't idiots people say oh they're thick they ain't thick they're a big firm and they got all the stuff that in the kitchen you nicked if they want to they can wait years you might not do nothing for another five years but you can still get nicked for the thing you done five years ago <laughs> no point is there Ryan listen thanks for coming on today, oh, brother. thank I you wish for you all the best for the future good luck with the book hopefully you get a part two out and i'll see you soon god bless thanks a lot <laughs>